Hollywood, California, we bring you a new Dr. Christian drama called Unfinished Business, starring Gene Hersholt as the popular Dr. Christian of River's End, and presented for your pleasure by the Cheesebro Manufacturing Company, owners of the trademark Vaseline, and producers of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly, Vaseline Hair Tonic, and other famous Vaseline specialties. Later this evening, after theaters and movies and dance halls have emptied, courting couples everywhere will be saying goodnight. Eyes will sparkle as ears listen to the oldest story in the world. No, not in this case. She turns, walks quickly into her house, and... Another romance has died on the doorstep. The boy steps into the local drugstore for a cup of coffee to think things over. Suddenly, he catches his reflection in the mirror over the counter. He sees himself, badly groomed, hair untidy, unsightly flakes of dandruff on his coat, a sloppy appearance. That's it. The girl is ashamed to be seen with him. Turn around, mister. What do you see on the other counter? Yes, Vaseline hair tonic. A handsome head of hair will make her proud of you. So take three steps. One, get a bottle of Vaseline hair tonic. Two, shampoo your hair once a week. But remember to give your scalp a good brisk massage with plenty of Vaseline hair tonic before your shampoo. And three comb or brush on a few drops of Vaseline hair tonic every morning. Vaseline hair tonic will give your hair a luster, a brilliance, an attractive, well-groomed appearance. Ask your good friend the druggist for Vaseline hair tonic, 40 cents or 70 cents. There's the curtain music now, and the play is about to begin. The title is Unfinished Business. The star is Jean Hersholt in the role of Dr. Christian. The principal players include Rosemary DeCamp as Judy Price, Leo Merrill as Ben Stack, the most methodical man in River's End, and Marion Free as Matty, his wife. Benjamin Stack owns a small factory where they make nuts and bolts. He is a member of all civic organizations, always votes a straight ticket at elections, and urges economy in government. He and his wife, Mattie, live in a neat white house which he has painted regularly every other year the first week in May. He leaves his house every morning at 8.30 and returns at 10 minutes after 6. His health is excellent and he rarely needs a physician, but he comes to Dr. Christian punctually twice a year for a physical examination. His reputation for routine is so established that Judy is startled when he appears at the office door one afternoon a little breathless. I should have telephoned for an appointment, Miss Judy, since it's past office hours. I try to be very careful about such matters, but this is... Well, I believe I may describe it as an emergency. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Stack. I'll find out whether Dr. Christian can see you right away. I realize this is most unusual. Oh, it doesn't matter. If it's impossible for Dr. Christian to see me... It'll I... be all right. Here's a magazine. Well, I... Uh, thank you. Oh, be a minute. Dr. Christian. Mm-hmm. I, um... <clears throat> I hate to do this to you. Mm-hmm, yes. Well, uh, what did you say, Judy? I said I hated to do this to you, but Benjamin Stack is here. Benjamin Stack? Mm-hmm. Why, Judy, where's the time go? Can't be the first of June already? No, it isn't. <laughs> well, don't tell me he's here off schedule. Why, I set out the geraniums and covered the perennial bed by his visits. What's the matter, Judy? He isn't ill, is he? Oh, well, he doesn't see me at all, but he's all upset about something. Oh, well, he probably wants to know if he dare substitute an orange for his breakfast grapefruit or admit <laughs> he's setting up exercises on a day when he's afraid of being late to the office. Yeah, <laughs> whatever it is, he's got the fidget. <laughs> well, can you take it? Yes, of course. Oh, I, I shouldn't have joked about him, Judy. Ben Stack is a good, responsible citizen, but... He's what my grandmother always referred to as a great warrior. Mm. Now, uh, show him in, will you? All right, if you say so. Come on in, Mr. Stagg. Dr. Christian will see you right away. Thank you, Miss Judy. Thank you. Hello, Ben. Be right with you as soon as I put these slides away. Got a couple of patients with bad throats. Just been examining some cultures I made. Throats? That can be a serious sort of infection, can't it? Oh, yes, yeah, sometimes. We're, we're not going to have an epidemic in River's End, are we? Oh, now, Ben, stop it. Don't borrow trouble. Well, what's on your mind? Dr. Christian, I have come to you because, as a doctor, I know you'll respect my confidence. Of course. The advice I require isn't entirely medical. Well, some of the best medicine doesn't come out of bottles. 
Go ahead, Ben. Tell me what it is. Dr. Christian, Matty and I, we're separated, and our estrangement may lead to a divorce. What? Benjamin Stack, what on earth? I... Why, I thought you and Matty were ideally happy. We were, Dr. Christian, we were. At one time, Matty was all a man could ask in a wife, but lately she's changed completely. In what way? Well, it was a gradual demoralization, Dr. Christian. The first thing I noticed was that she was neglecting to keep the window shades at the same level. Hmm. Well, uh, that can be very annoying. Yes. And then I had to go and search for the Bolt Nut Weekly Journal, which is always left folded on the table beside my chair. I found it in her sewing room, the pages literally strewn about the room. Why, she had been using it to cut a paper pattern. Well, now, some women frequently have to cut dress patterns. Not from the Weekly Journal. Not before I've even read it. And more than once, I found no preparations for supper when I arrived at home. One evening, the meal was as much as a quarter of an hour late. I like my supper at seven sharp. Matty knows that. But the... The climax came when she began leaving the cap off the toothpaste tube. What? It's true, Dr. Christian. I spoke to her about it, reminded her several times. What, uh, what did she say? She, she simply defied me, Dr. Christian. She said she was tired of toothpaste tubes with the caps on, that she liked window shades at all different angles, and what difference did it make whether meals were on time or not? And then, then she burst into tears and ran into her room and locked the door. Well, didn't you comfort her or tell her you were sorry you had hurt her feelings? Well, I suppose I would have, but it was 28 minutes after 8 and time to leave for the factory. And when I came home at night, she was gone. And she had taken her things? Yes. There was a note on the dresser that she'd gone to her mother's. Dr. Christian, she must be made to come back. Can't you talk to her? She'll listen to you. Well, now... What do you want me to say to her? I want you to point out how ridiculous her conduct is, how she's interrupting the entire pattern of our daily life. Why, I've had to take my meals away from home ever since she left. She knows how that upsets me. You think she'll feel that is sufficient reason for her to come back? Sufficient reason? Why, I've even had insomnia as a result of this experience. Have you, Benjamin? Yes. Usually, I just close my eyes and count sheep up to 101 and I'm off. But last night, I had to count up to 789. Oh. Oh, you'll make her see reason, won't you, Dr. Christian? Make her come back to me at once. Well, I'll tell you about your unhappiness, Ben. Try to appeal to her with your loneliness. Never and mind I... about my unhappiness and my loneliness, Dr. Christian. Just make Matty realize what she's done. You mean she's broken your heart? Broken my heart? Dr. Christian, she's upset my schedule. <laughs> Bring back, bring back, oh, bring back my Maddie to me, to me. <laughs> you suppose we can bring her back, Dr. Christian? <laughs> well, you never know till you try. <laughs> well, it's sweet of you to make the effort, but I'd never go back if I were in her place. Wouldn't you? To that human card catalog, I should say not. Ugh. How can he bear to be like that? Oh, most people are that way a little bit. Oh, Dr. Christian, no. Now, did you ever go out of the house halfway downtown and have to come back because you couldn't bear the suspicion that you had left the gas turned down in the kitchen or the cellar light burning? Did you? Yes, but... Or have a whole vacation spoiled because you weren't positive you'd put out that note for the milkman? Well... Well, you had one symptom of the disease Ben has an exaggerated form. Oh. I've seen you do plenty of window shade straightening in your time, too, young lady. Oh, I hate an untidy room, but... Well, I could never make adjusting window shades a major interest. You have your feeling about such things under control, but Ben is at the mercy of his. Everything in the world has to be just so, or he simply can't bear it. You know, a state of mind like this, well, like his, can become very serious, Judy. Don't you suppose Maddie ever rebelled before? Maybe, in her heart. <laughs> Any other worm turned at last. Ah, oh, Ben seems to feel sure she'll be glad to come back. This must be the place. Oh. I'll wait in the car. How long is it going to take you to put over this persuasive argument? Now, I've got to be at the hospital by 12. If I'm not back by 11.30, Judy, honk the horn, will mm, you? I'll honk it, all right. Got something to read? No, I'll listen to the radio. 
Suddenly, it's a blue world. For the last half hour, you've been listening to Ivan Dittmar's at the organ, broadcast... I'll be right there, Judy. But that was only the beginning, Dr. Christian. That's only the schedule up to one o'clock. From one to three, I was supposed to sew or uh, work in the garden. From three to four, I could change my dress and wave my hair. At four, I was supposed to sit down with some instructive reading. At five... All right, Maddie, all right. You made your point, you don't like it, and you won't go back to it. Go back to it? Never. Say, do you know what I did this morning? I lay in bed until ten o'clock. First time I've done a thing like that in years. I had my breakfast on a tray. Last night, I had coffee for supper. We never could have it because it kept Benjamin awake. I ate a midnight snack and I read a trashy novel till half past two in the morning. Go back! I'll tell Benjamin what you told me, Maddie. Tell him I'm having the first fun I've had in 15 years. Tell him he's not a human being. He's a system. Yes, yes, I will. Tell him, tell him he's no man. He, he's a robot. Quiet for sound. Goodbye, Maddie. Tell him, tell him. Goodness. <clears throat> I take it she's not coming back. Oh, I think she will eventually. You think she'll come back to him after that? Mm-hmm, because of that. After what she said? Oh, you think she likes his awful way of living? Hmm? No, no, I don't think she likes that. But if he still can make her that mad, I think she more than likes Ben Stack. I don't care, Dr. Christian. I don't think it's fair. You're a doctor, not a specialist in human relations. I don't know that there's such a big difference, Judy. As busy as you are, why should you have to take time out to get Maddie Stack into your office? Just so Benjamin can talk to her. Well, she wouldn't let him in when he went to her mother's, but I know she wanted to see him. Ah, I don't think he really cares a thing about her, Dr. Christian. Just his own comfort and convenience. Oh, they're so tied up together, he doesn't know which is which. He does care about it, Judy, in his way. Mm. We've been in there 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah, they have a lot to talk about. Dr. Christian, Matty still refuses to come... Matty still refuses to come home. I told him I'd come home under certain circumstances. But things will have to be awfully different. I agreed that I'd try to work out a modified schedule, which would suit you, Matty. But I don't want a schedule. I don't want ever to hear the word again as long as I live. But... I'd, I'd like it if, if we could just go off somewhere on a trip for a while. Sort of be gypsy. Gypsies? We'll drive till we get tired. Eat picnic lunches under the trees. Oh, and, Matty, oh, I right don't... now, I'd like to go over to the hotel and have supper. And then go to the elite. A movie? But, Matty, you know that's impossible. Why? Today's Thursday, a weekday. Saturday is our night for relaxation. We'll go to the Elite on Saturday. Oh, no, we won't. We've been to the Elite every Saturday evening for the past five years. Well... With a chocolate soda afterward at Roy Davis's drugstore. I'll never go there on Saturday again. But, Matty... Oh, it's no use, Benjamin. You can't change, even if you want to. Goodbye. But, Matty, you, you can't act this way. Can't I? You just watch me. Where are you going, Matty? Where am I going? I'm going to have the thrill of a lifetime, Dr. Christian. I'm going to the movie on Thursday. Hello, Dr. Christian. Hello, Judy. Anything happened? Mm, not much. Oh, Ben Stack was in. Oh, any word from Maddie? She's still at her mother's. Mm, that's bad. It's been quite a long time now. Oh, he looked terrible, Dr. Christian. Oh, he's positively morbid. I tried to talk him out of it, but with that methodical mind of his, he can't seem to accept anything that doesn't fit into a groove. Mm. Oh, I really felt sorry for him. He, he spoke as though he were going away. Hmm? Oh, maybe he's going to take that fishing trip I advised. He said uh, to thank you for all you'd done, and he, he sounded so sort of final, so desperate. Well, it's too bad, really. Yeah. Uh, the medical journal came. They're on your desk, and the mail, and here's some letters to sign. Well, well I'll attend to them in just a minute. I'll... Dr. Christian! Dr. Christian! Come, come quick! Uh, up the town hall! Well, what's the matter? They, they need you. They need you right away. Ben Stack! Yes? What about him? He's... He, he's out on the roof ledge. Out on the roof ledge? Yeah, he, he's committing suicide. Suicide? Good heavens. He, he says he says he's going to jump off. They, they sent me for you. 
Hurry, Dr. Christian, hurry! There he is! Oh. See him? Oh, on that ledge, way up in front. Oh, gee, look at the crop. Well, anyway, he hasn't jumped yet. I, I hope you get there in time. Oh, how did he, how did he get off there? The back window hedged his way around. Oh. Girl, Mary Otoff is saw him first. Gee, everybody's been trying to get him down, but he says he's, he's going to jump. Well, did they call the fire company? Can't they stretch your net? The ladders don't reach, and, and the net won't do any good. They, they can't get around that far. Gee, look at the crowd. Get out of the way. Get out of the way, will you? Here comes Dr. Christian. Dr. Christian. You know what to do. Maybe he is. Dr. Christian. Save Benjamin, save him, make him come down. I'll do my best, oh. Maddie. Oh, Dr. Christian, if you'll save him, I'll, I'll promise to keep right on schedule for the rest of my life. I'll tell him. I, oh. I thought he was going to do it that time. He's driving me crazy. Oh. Dr. Yes, Christian, what can you do? I'm going up to see if I can't get out there on the ledge with oh, him. Oh, you can't do that. You'll have to go out the window and all along that narrow coping. Dr. Christian, you must... Oh, it's the only way. I can't make him hear me from here. They said to send a city for your extension ladder. If that had come, he could walk that way. Well, I'm afraid he'd jump if he saw anyone coming, but if I want the fire ladder later, I'll take it. Oh, Dr. Christian, oh, Dr. Don't. Christian, it's all my fault. I drove him to this. Judy, will you take care of Maddie? Yes. I've got to get off there. Oh, Judy. Oh, there, there, Maddie. Dr. Christian will try to get him down. Oh, he's got to. He's got to, Judy. Judy, I'll do anything. If only Benjamin will get him down off that ledge, I'll... I'll, I'll, I'll even punch a dime to He's getting out the way. Well, Benjamin, <clears throat> quite a view up here, isn't it? Dr. Christian. You might as well go back. You can't dissuade me. Nobody's trying to dissuade you from anything. I just came out here to take a look at the town. You came out here to try to force me to get down. But I shan't, Dr. Christian. I shall jump promptly at 6 p.m. My mind's made up. Then I won't say a word against it. Committing suicide is something a man's got to decide for himself. Yes. For weeks I've realized I have to do it. But with everything so, so disorganized... It must have been bad for you. The things I've gone through in an effort to restore my house to some sort of order. But that's... that's over now. Dr. Christian, for the first time in my life, I'm at peace with the world. Are you, Benjamin? Yes. At last, nothing. Nothing remains to be done. Uh, what do you mean? Did you ever stop to think what a merry-go-round life is? Nothing ever completed? Always unfinished business of some sort to upset you. You do one task and there's another in its place. You fill one order and another one comes in. Well, I should think that would be good for business. When Matty was with me, I... I could endure it. But now... Benjamin. Benjamin. Matty will come back to you. That doesn't interest me now. Are you... Will she? She told me to tell you she'd do anything you wanted if you'd only come down. Well, if Matty came back, I... No. No, it's too late. I've arranged to do it this way, and I can't change my mind now. Dr. Christian, you'll find after I'm gone I haven't neglected a single detail. Not a single one. That's just like you, Benjamin. I've squared every obligation. I've made my will, and I can face death with a clear conscience. And you won't reconsider? Even for Maddie? Well, life with Maddie at her best was very pleasant, but... Now, I've made my arrangements, and I must carry them through. Uh, Benjamin! Uh, Dr. Christian, it's useless to appeal to me. I'm behind schedule as it is. Please go back off the ledge. Well, all right. All right, if, if you say so. But I have to admit I'm bitterly disappointed in you. Yes, I know. You, you believe suicide is unethical. Oh, I'm not arguing about that. I just told you were a better businessman. Huh? Well, what do you mean? What about the bill you owe me? The bill I owe you? What bill? Well, the bill for all the service I've been giving you for the past three months. Well, you never sent a bill. Well, I was waiting till the case was closed. I never dreamed you were the type of man who, who would run out on me. Run out on you? Well, now, a doctor's time and service are worth money, Benjamin, and I don't believe you can deny I've given you and your case a great deal of both. No. No, I can't deny it. I guess you have. And now you propose to repudiate the whole thing, too, too. 
Well, to actually cheat me. Well, I've left everything to Matty, Dr. Christian. You can send your bill to her. Send your bill to a helpless, heartbroken widow? Oh, what kind of a man do you think I am? Oh, no, Benjamin. If you want to go out of this world with your obligations on your head, your debts unpaid... Oh, no! Wait. I, I have some money with me. I'll, I'll pay your bill. How much is it? How much have you? Uh, $25. No. No, that won't do. My bill is $200. 200 But I can't pay that. Very well. Only don't think that will wipe off the stain. You'll be long remembered in River Sand for your unbusinesslike methods. Your, your careless, sloppy way of escaping your responsibility. Goodbye, Benjamin. Wait, Dr. Christian. I, I can't die owing you money. Oh, it's too late now. You decided to do no, it. No, no, I can't. I've got to get down and write you a check. Never mind, never mind. No, it's too late. No, no, it's not. I must get down. I... What was that? Oh. Oh, that's the emergency fire ladder from Center City. They're going to put it up here and take me off. Of course, if you want to go down too, Benjamin... Well, it completely upsets my plans, Dr. Christian, but my conscience gives me no alternative. I must pay your bill. Oh. Come on up the ladder. Okay, Doc. Of course, you know I shall have to arrange this entire thing all over again. Oh, I wouldn't hurry if I were you, Benjamin. Maybe what you really need is that trip Maddie suggested. A long, vagabond trip. Doing just what you please, going where you please. <laughs> After all, you have made arrangement for <clears throat> being away. Yes. Yes, I have. And if we traveled systematically, perhaps I could be away a week or two. We could get over quite a bit of territory in that time. Benjamin. If we were on the road promptly at 7.30, eight hours, a half hour for lunch, I... Oh, Benjamin. Uh, here we are, Dr. Christian. What can we do? Do? You can take Mr. Stack down. Yes, Doc. Uh, is he... Is it safe, I mean? He said he'd gone mad. I think it's perfectly safe. He may be mad, but there's method in it. And the curtain comes down on another Dr. Christian drama starring Gene Hirschold, who's waiting in the wings to make his weekly curtain speech about next week's play. In the spring, a young lady's fancy lightly turns to thoughts of a new permanent wave. And here's how you can make certain that this year's permanent will be more beautiful than any before. Prepare for your wave by conditioning the hair with regular Vaseline hair tonic treatments. Vaseline hair tonic treatments are especially important before getting a permanent wave because they help check any tendency to dryness, loose dandruff scales, or excessive falling hair. Why not try the famous Vaseline hair tonic routine? Once a week, rub plenty of Vaseline hair tonic on your scalp. Then wring out a steaming hot towel and wrap it around your head. When the towel cools a bit, repeat the process. Then give yourself a regular shampoo. You'll be delighted with the new softness and sheen Delighted, too, that your hair will take a more natural-looking permanent. Ask for Vaseline Hair Tonic today. Your choice of economical bottles at 40 and 70 cents. Get set for summer by conditioning your hair with Vaseline Hair Tonic. You'll be excited when you see how much more attractive, more flattering your new permanent will be. And now we're happy to present our star, Gene Hersholt, as the popular Dr. Christian. What is next week's play about, Dr. Christian? Next week's story is called Between Office Hours. The time of day that duty always considered quiet and dull. But when a mad killer walked into the office at that time, we all got plenty of thrills. And that's the story for next week. So until next Wednesday evening at this same hour, I'll say good night. Gene Hirschold is again starred in the new RKO picture called The Courageous Dr. Christian. Your whole family will want to see this latest story of River's End when it comes to your local theater. This is Arthur Gilmore adding a good night for the makers of Vaseline Preparations.